Said to be the model for the fictional Castle Wolfenstein of the famous computer game series Wevelsberg Castle near Paderborn in western Germany has a dark and mysterious history. It was Heinrich Himmler's personal castle where Nazi occultism was made into a pseudo-religion. And the spiritual home of the SS. The castle site has hosted fortresses since the 9th century. The current castle was built in 1603-9 as a second residence for the Prince Bishops of Paderborn. It housed witchcraft trials in 1631 and had a checkered and violent history during the Thirty Years' War when it was burned by Swedish troops in 1646. In 1650 the castle was repaired, gaining the Baroque Dome to its three towers. From 1802, the castle was owned by Prussia, but was destroyed again by fire in 1815, following a lightning strike. Renovations only occurred in the early 1920s, when it became a museum, a restaurant, and a youth hostel. The castle still needed substantial repairs and refurbishment. Its first association with the Nazis was in 1932, when 70 members of the Freiwillige Arbeitsdienst, or Volunteer Labour Service, moved in. Heinrich Himmler first spotted the castle when accompanying Hitler on his 1933 election campaign throughout Germany. Initially, Himmler wanted Burg Schwalenburg to be his castle, but negotiations fell through and Wevelsburg was chosen instead in November 1933. The castle, after some local resistance, was converted into an SS leadership school. The idea was to ensure that all SS leaders received the same ideological training, compatible with Himmler's esoteric ideas of Arianism and occultism. On the 22nd of September 1934, a formal ceremony was held and Himmler took over the castle. The school's focus was the study of Germanic pre- and early history, folklore studies, etc., and as a tool for ideological political training. The Burghauptmann, or fortress captain, was SS Obersturmbannführer, or Lieutenant Colonel, Manfred von Knobelsdorf. From 1938 to 1945, the Burghauptmann was SS Gruppenführer, or Major General Siegfried Taubert. Most of the officers serving at the castle were from the headquarters unit of the personal staff Reichsführer SS, while the guard detachment was drawn from the 1st SS Panzer Division Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler, the LSSAH, headquartered in Berlin. This unit provided the ceremonial guards at the Reich Chancellery and several other buildings. So what exactly went on inside the castle? There were no UFOs and there were no Nazi zombies. Archaeology was a big part of it, as Himmler's experts attempted to prove the origins of a racially superior race called the Aryans. Folklore and medieval history was studied through the paradigm of National Socialism. Strange ceremonies were held, including SS marriage consecrations, and it became progressively an isolated meeting place for higher SS leaders. From 1939, Himmler forbade anything about the castle appearing in newspapers or books. Himmler's SS would be proponents of Germanic mysticism, rune worship, racial doctrines, and an ancestor cult. The castle was redesigned, with a lot of reference to the legends of the Holy Grail. The rooms were all named, revealing a mixture of interests, from one called Grail, another called King Arthur, Christopher Columbus, Arian, and Teutonic Order, to name but a few. Himmler's racial theories were much in evidence regarding the workforce, a concentration camp being built adjacent to the castle to provide a labour force. The castle was refurbished to make it look more like a medieval fortress, with its exterior replastered and the western and southern wings rebuilt. An SS guardhouse was built in 1937, and work on improving the North Tower continued until 1943. Some talks took place at the castle, but little is known about them. Himmler planned that Wevelsburg would be greatly expanded following Germany winning the war to become, in his words, Centrum der Neuenfeld, or Centre of the New World. The North Tower housed two mysterious and unfinished rooms, the SS General's Hall and the Vault. 
The ground floor general's hall consisted of twelve columns joined by a groined vault. On the floor is a dark green sun wheel. It symbolized the center of the castle and therefore the center of the Germanic world. The twelve columns and recesses represented the twelve original SS lieutenant generals, a kind of Knights of the Round Table scenario. The crypt room followed a similar theme, with a pit in the centre of the room where an eternal flame burned, the ceiling above embossed with a carved swastika. The concentration camp next door would see 3,900 prisoners pass through its hands, of whom 56 were executed by the SS and 1,285 died of typhus. The core population were not Jews, but Jehovah's Witnesses, who were found to be excellent workers by the Nazis, as they did not believe in escaping. Also, there were large groups of Soviet prisoners of war. By March 1945, Himmler's world was collapsing all around him. The US 3rd Armored Division was closing in on the Paderborn area, and the castle would fall to US forces. Himmler wanted to prevent the castle's capture intact. Gruppenführer Taubert, the castle's commandant, fled on the 30th of March 1945. Himmler instructed one of his adjutants, SS Sturmbannführer, or Major Heinz Marker, to go to Wevelsburg with 15 men of Himmler's staff and destroy the castle. Marker's party lacked enough explosives to do the job properly. They managed to blow up the southeast tower, which was the least important structure. Marker then ordered the town fire brigade not to extinguish a huge blaze set by the SS, which ran through most of the castle. He was also charged with burying the castle's treasures, over 9,000 death's head rings held in a chest to commemorate SS men killed in action. This chest has never been recovered. Maka and his men also blew up the SS guardhouse and the SS administration building. The first US forces to arrive were men of the 83rd Armoured Reconnaissance Battalion of the 3rd Armoured Division, who arrived on the 2nd of April 1945 and liberated the surviving concentration camp inmates. Wevelsburg Castle rose once more from the ashes in 1948-49, to being restored and reopened in 1950 as a museum and youth hostel. Today it contains a museum about the SS connection to the castle. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.